Welcome to the tutorial of the Fixed Assets Register. When you purchase the Fixed Assets Register, you will receive two files, one with some examples within the Fixed Assets Register file, and one that is blank for you to use for your own fixed assets. In this tutorial, I'm going to use the example to show you how the Fixed Assets Register works. The columns that are colored in represent the columns that you will need to enter the data in and the columns that are not colored in are the columns that will automatically calculate the values for you once you have entered the data into the columns that are colored. The div column is for if you have divisions within your organization and you would like to allocate a specific asset to a specific division. The description of the asset is self-explanatory the serial number of the asset, and if it's a motor vehicle, you could put the chassis number in or the registration number. The depreciation percentage per asset group. I have already inserted the standard depreciation rate for you per asset group. But if you have another depreciation rate that you use for whatever reason, you can edit those depreciation rates in that column. The months to depreciate, you will enter manually and the number of months will depend on when you purchase the asset and if you still own the asset at the time of preparing your register, the date purchased, the source represents the source of the funds that you use to purchase the asset, so it would either be cash or credit card or the name of the bank that you concluded an HP agreement with. The reference number is for you to enter a reference number if you do use those in your business. The cost price of the asset that you're going to be entering onto your register and in the case of a motor vehicle that will include VAT because you may not claim VAT as an input tax on the purchase of motor vehicles but in the other categories of assets the cost price will exclude VAT. The additions current year column will be for the cost price of the asset if you have purchased it in the current year that you are preparing your asset register. If the asset was disposed of within the year that you are preparing the asset register, you will enter yes. And if it wasn't disposed of, you will leave it blank. The cost of the disposal will then be the original cost price of the asset, and that will be calculated automatically once you enter the word yes. The total cost at the current year end then adds up the cost price of assets as at the prior year end, plus the additions, will then automatically give you the total cost as at the end of the current year that you're preparing your asset register for, the accumulated depreciation for the prior year end. The first time you use this product, you will need to enter that figure yourself. In the months and years to follow, this Excel file will calculate that for you automatically. I have also entered a formula for this one in particular to help you if you need to calculate the accumulated depreciation for the prior year end of your assets if you don't have that figure handy to use to calculate your own accumulated depreciation as at the prior year end in terms of the year that you're currently preparing it for the first time you use the product. The depreciation current year will be calculated automatically for you. The accumulated depreciation on disposal will be calculated automatically for you if you've entered yes in the disposal column. The accumulated depreciation for the current year will be calculated for you. And in this case, there is no accumulated depreciation at the current year end because this asset was disposed of. So it automatically calculates zero. The book value is then automatically calculated. The date that you disposed of an asset, you will need to enter manually. The amount that you sold the asset for, if applicable, you will enter manually and the file will calculate the net profit or loss for you automatically. So let's go and enter another asset in the motor vehicles category just to walk you through the process. Let's enter the description of this car as cute car. You of course will enter the brand name and the model and perhaps even the model year of the car. As much information as possible is always good. The serial number, like I said, either the chassis number or the registration number in the case of a motor vehicle. Depreciation percentage, you either leave it as standard or you change it to this particular rate that you use in your business. The months to depreciate will rely on when we purchase this asset. So you'll need to complete the date purchased. And if you disposed of the asset in the current year, you'll also need to complete 
the date of disposal and enter the word yes before you can enter the number of months to depreciate in the current year and I'll explain that to you now. So let's say that we purchased this asset in the year 2008 on the 14th of March and we like Bank Tut so let's enter that we purchased this asset also from Bank Tut on HP. The documentation on the HP agreement indicated that the vehicle price including that is 110,000 for example. Now this cost will go into the cost prices at the prior year end because we didn't purchase it in the current year since we are doing this fixed assets register for February 2010 and this asset we purchased in 2008 so it will be a cost price in a prior year end and not an addition in the current year. If disposed current year enter yes Let's not dispose of this asset in this example. Cost of disposals will then be zero for the current year. Total cost current year will then be calculated automatically from the figure we entered there. And accumulated depreciation prior year end. This is the first time you're using the product, so you'll need to calculate that. And by the way, the reason these two don't have any accumulated depreciation for the prior year end is because we only bought these assets in the current year. So there wasn't depreciation as at the end of the prior year. But this one there will be because we purchased it in 2008. So if we now take this formula and we copy it down to this cell, I can then show you how to use that formula in this example. So the formula is allowing for 1, 2, 3, four years worth of accumulated depreciation. We purchased this asset on the 14th of March 2008. So we will start calculating the depreciation from the 1st of April and assuming that your financial year end is end of February, we'll then go from 1st of April 2008 to end of February 2009, which is then 11 months. So the first year depreciation will be calculated at 11 months so you can change that 8 months to 11 and the next year's depreciation will then be for 12 months and it will be from the 1st of March 2009 then until the end of Feb 2010 but that is the year that we're currently in which will therefore not be accumulated depreciation prior year end this year will then be depreciation current year so we only need to enter the depreciation calculation for the 11 months 1st of April 2008 to the 28th of February 2009 and that will then be your accumulated depreciation for this vehicle. You see the first vehicle was purchased in 2005 and that's why it's got more years for the calculation of the accumulated depreciation for that assets because you owned it since 2005. The depreciation current year then will be calculated once we enter the number of months that you need to depreciate it for the current year and you still own the asset and you purchased it in the previous year so therefore the depreciation for the current year will be for the full 12 months from the 1st of March 2009 to the 28th of Feb 2010 which is the period that we are preparing the fixed assets register for and it will then automatically calculate the depreciation for the current year. We haven't disposed of this asset so it calculates nothing for the accumulated depreciation on disposals. The accumulated depreciation current year end will then add the prior year's depreciation to the current year's depreciation and automatically give you that total and then it will calculate the book value for you automatically which is the cost price less the accumulated depreciation as at the current year end. No disposal, so no profit or loss on this asset. And it's as simple as that. These assets here, we've only depreciated for seven months because we purchased them in the current year. And this asset here, we depreciated for five months because we sold it in July 2009. So the depreciation can only be calculated for the number of months that you own the asset. So the five months then represents March 2009, April, May, June. We sold it end of July and therefore will depreciate 
for five months. And exactly the same data entry principles will apply to all the categories of the assets. IT equipment, furniture, office equipment, which then gives you a grand total of all your assets, which adds up the individual asset categories because you have totals for each individual asset category also. The fixed assets register can be integrated into all the other products that are offered by FIG. The cash book product caters for the capturing of all journal entries like depreciation. So we can integrate the fixed assets register into the cash book product where you do your journal entries. And we can integrate into the trial balance and the income statement and the balance sheet right up to cash flow. Please just request whatever integrations you need for automatic updating of any of those products from your fixed assets register. Any questions, any further development that you need, any support, please don't hesitate to pop us an email. I hope to speak to you again very soon. Ciao for now.